Hey you guys, welcome back. So I'm trying to get back in my rhythm of doing a video and I just knew these two. You guys, what, we just had a whole talk, literally right before I started this video, I was like, we're gonna all behave like good little children because I tend to end up having to put my little dogs away when I'm filming because they think me talking is like an excuse to run around and be crazy, specifically this one. <sighs> anyway, so. I have been asked a lot about like what I think of my handy after a year. I feel like I answered a lot of the questions in my video a couple videos back. I talked about like my first year in business and I think I did address quite a few um, of the handy things in that video as well. Um, but as of right now, I still absolutely love my Hanvey. I've never had any issues with it whatsoever. Um, and any like hiccups is more what I would consider it that I've had. Hanvey has been so helpful. Um, so forthcoming with information. They've really done everything to just make sure that their groomers stay on the road. From my experience. Now, I don't know if anybody's had a different experience, but, um, I absolutely love my van. Like, I literally could not imagine not having my van. So, um, I do think I've talked a lot about that, but, uh, the only issues that I've had is, like, my water pump went out at one point, and I had to replace it myself, which took me five minutes, and, um, I was able to, um, this is Hammer, by the way, I don't think I've ever done a formal video on him, but yeah, these are my littles, I do have a Sheezy now, if you haven't seen, um, he was a client's dog, client couldn't keep him, so I took him, so now he's my pain in the ass, <laughs> um, but anyway, so, like I said, uh, the water pump went out, I replaced it, there was, there was already a replacement in the van, so I, like, replaced everything, and then I messaged Hanvey to, uh, order another backup thinking that I would have to pay for it and they were like oh no it's under warranty so all I have to do is bring them back the one that broke and they're gonna give me another one for free so um if you knock my red bolt over it'll be the last thing you do see next thank you I put it all the way over on this side table so that nobody would bump it and no lie she was literally climbing over there anyway you're distracting me this is why we had this pep talk before the video okay y'all distracting me I, I I don't know whose idea it was to get four dogs. You guys, it's so much. I like literally three was perfect, but it was like, what are we gonna do? He didn't have anywhere to go. How could you tell him now? And I wanted a dog that like I could do haircuts on because all my dogs are like this, that they just get a D-shed and trim the same way every time. So he's getting a mullet. Can you see his mullet? He's kinda, it's kinda hard to see, but yeah, he's got a mullet coming in. So anyway, back to the point. Like I said, the only thing I've had go out is the water pump. I have had issues with the sprayer heads in the bathtub, like the green sprayer head. I think I'm on my third one right now. <laughs> There's like a little rubber O-ring in it that goes bad and then it starts leaking and then you have to get a new one. Um, but those are cheap. I don't even know how much it is. Uh, probably like 10 bucks, maybe 20 at the most. I don't know. I'd have to ask them because I'm always like, just hook me up, Hammy. <laughs> so I go up there and... I have like an account or whatever with them um, and they just take it out of my account. So anyway, um, as far as like the van goes, that's really it. Um, I have not had to bring it. It needs to go in for like an oil change and stuff to like Mercedes. But as far as like the inside of the van, just like how it was when I bought it. So I've been happy with it. I really like the especially the winter aspect of the van i don't have the ever warm system in mine but i know i i saw last year whenever uh it got cold out everybody using their ever warm it was so cool like they'd have their ever warm system on and then like the the van would be completely defrosted with like snow like around it like there would be like a little dry area with snow like all around you know and then, like, all their cars next to it would just be covered with snow. So, it's really cool. Um, I'd love to know more about how the Everworm works, but I'm in South Carolina. I just didn't need it for this climate. It really does not get that cold here. The coldest temperature that I see is, like, maybe under 20 degrees, but usually it, we get in, like, the 20s. It's rare. I think we had one day last year that uh, it got into the teens. 
Um, so anyway, I really like that. And I like that, you know, at the end of the night, whenever I need to like refill and get it ready for the next day, it really is quick. Like I can get the van broken down for the night and ready for the next morning in like five to 10 minutes. I have my little system down. So, um, I absolutely love it. Like, I just wanted to say that because I do get asked a lot and I'll make another video on it. I'm sure I tend to like repeat videos because you know, the thing is, is like not everyone is going to watch every single video I've ever posted. So I may have said something in one video that somebody was curious about, but they haven't seen that video, you know, so it's, it's whatever. I've gotten to the point where I understand. I just have to like keep saying it so that everybody hears it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's how I feel about the van, but I did want to talk about like the struggles of being a business owner too, because my problem as somebody that owns a business and also does like social media kind of stuff and gets asked questions about businesses, my thing I see the most is that people are like, Hey, I want to start my own business because I think it's going to be easier than what I'm doing. Like they... You know, and I'm not saying that, like, it is hard. Like, it's hard. I, I, how do I, like, put this in a good way? Like, there are things that are easier, but there are also things that are harder. Like, the things you don't think about, like, basically all the paperwork and all the bookkeeping and, like, making sure your taxes and everything's straight, that's the most stressful part. And that's something that I don't think people even take into consideration. Um, and... You know, those are really things to consider. But I have a whole list, so let's let's just, you know, you know me. You know I got my notes, because if I don't have these, I will just blab about nothing for two hours. Look, I've already blabbed for six minutes without this, okay? Trust me, I need notes. So, um, the first struggle, we're going to go into my list now, okay? <laughs> the first struggle of business that I have noticed is that there's no, like, official clocking out right? Like I will go into work. I usually leave my house between eight and eight 30 every morning. And then sometimes I won't get back until seven o'clock at night. And then at seven o'clock at night, I have to message people, book appointments, catch up on anything on social media, all that stuff. And also take care of my dogs. I have four fucking dogs, right? So I got to do that and feed myself. Like I get home and I'm not done with work. Whereas if you're working anywhere working for somewhere else like the second you walk out of that door if you see your boss calling you can ignore it <laughs> you know what I mean like you can be like nope but when you're a business owner that all changes uh I do one thing that you'll get a lot of is you will get texts I've gotten texts for grooming at like midnight 1 a.m I've gotten phone calls like late as fuck at night um weekends even when it's posted everywhere that I'm closed I get call after call after call like if you're on vacation you're gonna be getting calls like no matter what you're gonna be getting calls and it's really hard um like when I go on vacation I always end up booking at least a couple of appointments like it's like really really hard for me to be like I'll just wait until I get back like I genuinely need this time off I have gotten better like I'm closed Monday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Sunday and Wednesday, you're not going to hear back from me if you're asking about grooming. Monday is the day that my assistant comes and she cleans, the, she does like a deep clean on the van. And uh, that's also when I do a lot of, like I'm, I'm trying to make it more of like my filming day and it's when I do like my housework and stuff. So anyway, I consider Monday a work day, even though I'm not physically grooming, I'm still doing stuff like today I went and got a pedicure and booked a bunch of clients <laughs> while I was getting my toes done so multitasking you know yeah li listen listen I hate booking people I hate doing I hate messaging back and forth with people and they give them a date and they're like I can't do that one can you do this date and you're looking at your schedule and you're like I pretty much gave you my only option <laughs> you know um so anyway that kind of stuff is so stressful sometimes like not being able to just be like I'm off work and like I mean you can but you're still gonna get like blown up by messages and it's really hard to just ignore them you know and then you start looking at how, how far behind you are and then people start messaging twice they're like hey like I messaged you or what I'll get is like I'll get somebody that messages me on Facebook and then they'll wait like 12 hours to a day and then they'll mess they'll text me and then they'll message my Instagram and it's like I'm going to get back to you I saw your first message you don't have to message me 10 times to get a hold of me I as the messages come in I take like a mental note I'm like I'm gonna start here finish here so everybody stays in the same order in which they text me and you're not gonna like miss out on an appointment because I'm booked weeks out anyway you know so either way um that's 
for me, like, one of the most stressful things is, like, not being able to be, like, I am off work right now. Like, it's really hard. Like, even though you try, like, there's still a lot of times that you end up working when you're trying to be off, okay? So, the second thing I personally find to be an issue is the customer's always right mentality. Um, it has made people super high and mighty, super demanding. Um, it's set their expectations, like, way too high. Like, basically, people expect that you're gonna, like, fucking clean the floor with the toothbrush underneath them you know well but you know it's just like too much like they, they just want you to fucking roll out the red carpet every time you see them like people have super super high expectations and they believe that basically the business should do everything in their power to make the customer happy and I just don't I don't do that like I provide the best service I can provide I make sure every dog that I groom that leaves my van is looking the best that I can make it look that day. Like, and then the next time I come, I'm going to try to make it look better than the time before, you know? So that's my focus is just putting out like really fucking good grooms and the rest falls by the wayside. Like I'm not going to sit there. I, I don't argue with people about money. I've had, I think two people I've had to give a refund to and the first lady was because I didn't realize, like, it was a newer customer. I didn't realize how badly matted her dog was. She paid in advance. Um, once I started shaving, I realized this was a dog that needed to be shaved down by a vet. So, refunded her. And then I had one lady that, like, did not have a good place for me to park. And I pulled up. And the way I had to pull in, like, I went over her grass. And I left a tire mark in the grass. And she fucking lost it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was so, to me, it's so stupid. Like, I'm like, how, just, this is off topic, and I'm sorry if this lady's watching it. I know she's not, but how do you live in a three to $500,000 home and your grass is that weak? Like, I literally have people park on my grass all the fucking time. Like, and I myself, I've parked my van on my grass and there's nothing, nothing. You would never even know I did it. And even my neighbors, my neighbors, like, we, we live in, like, $100,000 homes, and my fucking neighbors have, like, big work vans parked on the grass all day long. Their house is being rebuilt right now. Their grass is fine. You would never even know that anybody's parking in it. So how do you live in a house that expensive and your grass is that shitty? Like, you must have the worst grass of all time. But either way, so she messaged me freaking out about the grass. I, I apologize because genuinely I didn't mean to hurt her grass. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. So anyway, and then I refunded her, no questions asked. Like... That's, I'm not sitting here and fighting with, like, somebody, if somebody wanted a refund for me, I'll give it to them. Like, you're never going to get your dog groomed by me again, but I will give you a refund. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not going to do it twice. I'm not coming back. If I've had to give you a refund for some bull, like, fuckery, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then I'm, I'm not coming back. So anyway, the customer is always right. You should, as a business owner, do your best to provide the best service and customer service that you are able to provide. But like I said, this whole customer's always right mentality gets so taken out of hand. And then you just get people that want everything done for nothing. So I'm not a huge fan of the customer is always right. And if you come here, you're wrong because this is my business. I run the show. This is my motherfucking circus. I'm the ringleader and I'm right, not you. <laughs> um, but anyway... Uh, so yeah, I said people are demanding, self-entitled, and rude, um, which I have gotten a lot of, um, but now that I'm not taking new clients, I get less of it, so <laughs> there's that. That's one thing to look forward to. If you're still taking clients, new clients right now, but you're going to cut them off eventually, it's something to look forward to. You don't get so many, like, rude-ass people when you're just dealing with the same people all the time, you know? Anyway, so, uh, also... When customers know that you are the business owner and you set the prices and that you have control over that, they try to barter a lot harder. Oh, that rhymes. <laughs> barter harder. So uh, when I worked, I used to work at Sally Beauty Supply and we would get people there that would try to like haggle on prices, but nothing like a business owner. Like, okay, as Sally's I would get people that would be like, well, over here, I can buy this product for da da da. And I'd be like, great go over there and buy it then, you know? 
Um, but as a business owner, I get the guilt trip. <laughs> like, it's my fucking problem. Look, I can't, your guilt trip means nothing to me. You know why? Because if I call my fucking electric company and I'm like, well, Susan, you know, she's having a hard time right now. So I had to give her a discount on her dog. They're gonna be like, that's great, sweetie, but you still owe us X amount of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, my power company, my water, my internet, my bill companies, they don't give a shit, you know? And I'm not saying I don't give a shit. I'm sorry you're having a hard time, but I can't. <laughs> I'm not here to give away free shit. If I was giving away free shit all the time, I would go out of business, okay? So I have a business to run. I'm not here to give discounts. Like, I, I really don't give discounts for anything. I don't give a discount if you have multiple dogs. I don't, like, what do you, you want a discount for what? Go to PetSmart. Like, they have coupons. Like, they're corporate. They can afford to do coupons. I'm fucking small business. I have bills to pay, right? There's nobody here. I'm supporting four fucking mouths, okay? So stop, stop. You know what's just the cringiest part, just while I'm on this rampage? The cringiest part about that to me is I've gone to people's houses that are triple the size of mine that are trying to get me to give them a discount or help them out. I had one lady that, um, she lives in a super fucking nice house and she asked me, she gives me a check and she's like, I post dated it for this day. Like basically like gave me a catch 22. I had already groomed the dogs. And then she's like, Oh, can I post date this check? What do you fucking mean? Can you post date the check? Did I groom your dogs three days from now? No, I groomed them now. So now I get paid. Like, what do you mean? Like, this is not how that fucking works. And I've, also, oh my god, I hate doing invoices. Like, I see so many people doing invoices. Do you guys not have issues with people paying them? Because I almost every time I send an invoice, I have to text somebody and be like, hey, don't forget your invoice. I noticed you haven't paid it. Like, I'm literally so close to getting rid of invoices. Just saying, that's another struggle, invoices. Oh my god. Like, literally, people, and then, like, they'll be like, I'll pay it later, and then they don't, and you're like, ha, fuck me, right? Like, Huh. Anyway, <laughs> this is just a rant video because this is struggles of business. We got a rant, or it's not even fun. Then I'm just like whining, right? Like at least I gotta like make you laugh a little bit, right? <laughs> so um, the next thing I put is if you have an angry customer, honey, it's all you. There's no one else to fucking help you. Like that's one thing. Like every job I've ever worked, I've had somebody I can be like, that's their problem, you know. And now it's like I have to deal with them. I'm not always very good at dealing with people because when I have a potty mouth and I have a short temper when it comes to that and you know I just don't know what's going to come out of this mouth okay luckily I've only gotten into it with one potential customer <laughs> he's like he <laughs> he had I'm sorry it's, it's not funny but it kind of is he had a like super aggressive dog that like basically got kicked out of all the shops in the area and I was like oh I'm I, I don't groom any aggressive dogs at all I explained why because I'm a one-woman show if I get bit I'm fucked I don't have anybody else to run my business for me not only am I fucked but so are all my clients because now nobody can groom their dogs either so now what you know so I explained that to him and he told me that I didn't care about dogs so it's like, like, what gave you that impression? Like, because I won't groom your dog, that's probably going to bite me. And I even, I like asked him very specifically, I was like, am I even going to be able to pick him up? Does he just bite for nails? And he's like, no, you won't even be able to touch him. Okay, so go to a vet and get sedated, you fucking psycho. Anyway, um, so yeah. You gotta deal with those customers and, and like if you you gotta decide how you're gonna do it are you gonna do like business professional or are you just not gonna give a shit like me <laughs> like i'm like the type like if you want to go with me i will fucking go back and forth with you but you're gonna get your feelings hurt like you think i care <laughs> i don't <laughs> you know what i mean like for one dog no i'm sorry like i don't care if it was 10 i my dignity is worth a lot more than that so i'm yeah i'm the wrong one don't come over here yelling at me like that will yeah. Another example though, there was like one day I'm like driving my little van, right? I'm not fast. I'm a fucking giant ass van, right? Super tall and everything, right? And this this truck behind me that was riding my ass so aggressively. She's like setting my bump, my, uh, what are they called? My little beepers off. Uh, and she's like literally about to hit me and she tries to come up next to me like she's gonna do something and she like she like throws her hands up I said and she was like <laughs> yeah bitch that's what the fuck I thought I waited so long for that review I was like please leave me a bad review so I can figure out who the fuck you are never came never came so that's I bet you next time she goes to ride a work of vehicles ass like that 
she won't do it. I bet you she won't. I bet you she'll think about that time I flicked her off and she's gonna be like, maybe I like, honestly, I'm like the type of person, like if you're aggressively riding my ass like that, then I'm just assuming you're trying to fight me. Okay. So if you want to fight, let's fight. <laughs> just saying, I'm just saying that's in my personal car too. I get so mad. I'm like, are we going to fight right now? Cause I'll kick your ass. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so um, I actually already talked about the next subject. It was the taxes, the paperwork. I pay a bookkeeper to do mine. So all I have to send her is my monthly van payment, like when I get my receipt or whatever. And then I send her my bank statements every month. Like at the end of the month, I send her the statement for the business account and everything that I bought and whatever. And then certain things, like if I pay, I just paid the taxes on the van. I took a picture of that, sent it to her, those kind of things, you know, so I send her all that shit, and she puts it in the QuickBooks for me, okay, and then when it comes to tax time, she's already got my shit, so she just does a little taxes, I pay her a bunch of money, and we're good to go, okay, I would rather pay her every fucking dollar I have than have to do that shit myself, I cannot be bothered, okay, just saying, so something to consider, you may want to get somebody to help you with your paperwork, because if you are doing the full-time grooming and driving and being the face and all that stuff, you really don't have time to be fucking around with the paperwork, that just is way too time consuming, if you want to work every day of, or every hour of your life, then go ahead and do your own book work too, but for me, I'm like, no, nah, I'd rather go get my nails done, I'd rather go get a tattoo, I'd rather do literally anything else, <laughs> so, and I, Oh my God, the book work is so meticulous. Like you have to be careful because it's number related and you start typing in wrong numbers, you can fuck up everything. So yeah, <laughs> I suggest paying somebody to do your bookkeeping, but you do whatever the fuck you want. It's not going to affect my life at all. I don't care what you do. I'm just giving you a suggestion. Uh, and then I've kind of already touched on the next part too, which is there's not enough hours in the day to do everything you need to do. Just life that's life as a business owner is you never feel like you have enough time <laughs> for anything like you're like I need to do so much like I do all this shit and then I remember I have a house to clean oh my god my house is such a mess and I should be cleaning it but what am I doing I'm making videos because I'm a procrastinator so yeah not enough hours in the day not enough hours in the day ham 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 <laughs> all right so the next thing is remembering to make your orders before you run out of your shit. That's a hard one for me. Maybe not for you, but for me, I probably, I even have a little whiteboard. I like write it all down. But then next thing I know, I'm like fucking out of everything. I'm like, oh my God. Like I'm like trying to make do like on the amount of shampoo and stuff I have. Oh my God. Nightmare. Do it all the time. Mm -hmm. A struggle. The struggle's fucking, fucking real, you guys. Okay. So. Next thing is you pick up all the slack, okay? If your employees don't show up, if something happens, anything at all, like, you are the one that picks up the slack. Like, mainly the thing, like, and I have my assistant that comes, but she really just does my cleaning and stuff. Like, I don't depend on her for, like, the grooming aspect. So, if, like, like, she comes with me one day a week when I'm out in the van, and typically what I have her do is clean up behind me as I'm like, like when I finish with the tub, clean up the tub. When I finish with the table, clean up the hair, clean up the table, that kind of shit. Um, and then also texting my next client for me, you know, those kind of things, right? So, um, yeah. But if she were to call out on Monday, I have to go out and clean that shit. I gotta clean it. Ain't nobody else to clean it. I would be so sad. Um, but that's, that's the reality is that you have to pick up all the slack and nobody gives a shit about your business half as much as you do. They just don't. You're going to get so many people, especially if you're a dog groomer, they're going to be like, oh my God, it's so fun. Like <laughs> my little daughter wants to be a dog groomer. Can she fucking come work with you? <laughs> like, no, she can't because I don't want to deal with teenagers. <laughs> so yeah. Um, <clears throat> the next thing I have is you make all the decisions, good or bad, okay? And that can be very tricky, okay? Because, like, you've got to decide, like, you know, oh, am I going to charge extra for this? Or am I going to do this, this, thing? Like, it's, you would think that making these type of decisions would be super easy, but there are some really hard decisions that you end up coming upon. And, and you've got to make that decision. There's nobody to make it for you because this is your gig. You got to do it. And it's very stressful sometimes. Like, I've definitely run into some things that I've had to make calls on. Like, even down to, like, the dogs that I'm grooming and stuff like that. <sighs> Pricing, all those things. Like, perfect example, I had a dog earlier this week that was covered in fleas. 
He is allergic to flea medication and he also has outdoor cats everywhere. So I just know they're just covering him in fleas. And I'm like, obviously I'm going to have to charge more for that, even though it's a good client. He's always been super regular. I don't want to charge him more, but I realize I have to charge him more because every time I'm done with that dog, I have to completely like do my van, like wipe it down because I do not want to get any other dog fleas. You know what I'm saying? So it takes more work on my part. So I have to make the tough decision, not only to charge him more, but I have to tell him about it too. And I'm dreading it. Okay. But that's the kind of things you run into. You're like, oh, like I've got to get rid of this client. Or another big thing that was hard for me was that whenever I first started, I was taking like clients from like an hour radius out. And then I realized that that was not realistic and it was running into problems. So I had to drop areas that I previously serviced and I had to fire some clients when I did that. Oh, it was terrible. I felt so bad. It was so bad, but I had to. Uh, it's, it was not a fun situation. So anyway, just telling you, I'm just being honest. Okay. Uh, and then the startup can take a lot of work. Okay. Like it depends fully where you are. Cause like, I think state to state, it's completely different, but you gotta, you know, get your, I think everybody has to get an EIN. I'm pretty sure that's across the United States. It's like your social security number for your business, essentially. So you have to get that and then you gotta decide, are you gonna be LLC? Are you gonna be sole proprietor? Are you gonna be in a partnership? What are you gonna do, right? So there's that. And then you've got to write up a business plan, especially if you're getting a loan. You've got to sit there and write out your whole business plan. You know how annoying and time consuming that shit is? I hate it. That was one of the worst things I ever had to do was write that business plan. <laughs> and then I didn't even end up, that's a whole other story. Well, I guess I should tell you. So uh, basically I was originally going to try to get a loan for the bank from the bank for my van. Um, but basically the life circumstances I was in, it, it was just going to take too long. It was going to be too much to try to go through the bank like that. So I ended up taking a loan out for my mom, essentially, and I'm paying her back um, rather than the bank. But because I went with my mom, I didn't even use my business plan I'd worked so hard on. <laughs> oh, if I think about how many hours I put in that business plan to do nothing with it. You should refer back to your business plan. Also though, also my business plan was also written because if you've watched me for a while, then you know originally I was going to open a grooming salon in my uh, carport. I've got a garage that's like a three car garage. It's a separate building. It's fucking huge. And I was like, oh, it's gonna make a perfect grooming salon. And then the town that I live in was like, you can't open a salon there, you stupid bitch. Even though I bought this house, my real estate agent was supposed to like look into that. I literally, my only request from my real estate agent was to zone me somewhere I could open a business on my property and she fucked it up. Just fucked it all up. Dropped the ball on that one. Thanks girl. Um, so anyway, I wrote my business plan for the shed or for the carport or whatever. And then after I was done with that, I realized I couldn't even do that. So all for nothing. hours and hours and hours of work. I don't even want to think about it. So there's, there's that. That's fun. Uh, and then you got to get the loan approval. You got to kind of set the structure for your business, whatever, right? The next thing is dealing with unexpected expenses. That is the biggest bitch of it all. Like, and you can like, for me, I can make the money back fast, but oh my God, it fucking sucks. And I don't know if it's just me, but I swear to God, I'll be smooth sailing, like collecting some money, get some money put back. I'll be doing good. And then something will inevitably happen and I'll be broke. I'll like have all these bills due at once and it fucks me. And like, yeah, so unexpected expenses. Um, yeah. Uh, the next thing I wrote is hiring. This is like the hardest thing in the world. I've kind of already touched on this. Like I was talking about like how like everybody, like people think like, oh, dog, so fun, right? Uh, but, sorry, I had to get my drink. I had to, it was necessary. Okay, I've been talking too much. My mouth's dry, okay? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so like I said, it's really, really hard to find, first of all, somebody that's serious about it, not just doing it for a side gig for fun. Two, to keep them coming. You know what I've had the most trouble with is keeping people like consistently coming to work. Like they'll come for like a week and then all of a sudden it's like, where you at? You're late all the time, whatever. And I'm a late person, but like, anyway, yeah, you'll get a lot of that or they just don't show up. And as I already mentioned, nobody gives a shit about your business like you do. They just don't. Even like your best employee, like it's not their business, it's your business. So, you know, um, 
And then, oh, I wrote this so long ago. I, I don't remember what this last note was about. Uh, but the last thing I will touch on is keeping yourself motivated might be the hardest thing ever. Like you don't have anybody above you to be like, hey, like make sure you get this, this and that done, you know, whatever, nobody checking behind you, whatever. You have to be, and like, honestly, if you want to, you can call out of work every single day. You know how like that can potentially be very bad, you know? Cause like if you think, like you're like, oh, I'm just gonna call out of work today or whatever. Like you're gonna put yourself behind, you know? So there's nobody holding you accountable. You have to like, actually motivate yourself and like push forward yourself and not rely on anybody else and I think that's like one of the hardest things is like when you wake up like so tired and like you want to cancel the whole day like and you can if you want to you can cancel the whole day like who's gonna stop you you can do it but you gotta weigh the weigh the cons you can piss off your customers you're gonna push your whole schedule back all that shit so even when you wake up on the hardest morning, you got to wake up and still go in, even like through anything. Like you're going through personal shit in your life. Nobody gives a shit. You got to fucking go to work, right? And like people, I shouldn't say nobody gives a shit, but like, you see what I'm saying? Like they kind of don't, they kind of don't give a shit. Like people will like pretend to like, you know, and you know, like your close inner circle, like they care about you. But like, as far as your customers go, you fucking, your baby daddy broke your heart yesterday. They don't give a shit. Their dog needs to be groomed, right? So there's a lot of that. And I I talked about this, I think, I think I talked about this, that I was like feeling like for a while, especially once I got really busy, like it just kind of felt like, come here, groom robot. Come here, lady. You groom my dog now. Groom it, lady. Like that's how I felt. Like it was just like, everybody's like, oh, you're off work today? Come groom my dog. Like, I literally, I parked my van behind my house, and I still, like, the other day, like, my fucking, or I shouldn't say the other day, it was actually a couple months ago, but the fucking neighbor's lawn guy comes over, like, I'm, like, in, I was about to go do that photo shoot in my van. If you follow me on Instagram, then you've seen it, but I was about to go do that photo shoot in my van. I'm wearing a dress, <laughs> like, and this man comes up to me, and he's, like, hey, like, I'm, I live down the street. I have two dogs. Like, if you want to come right now, you can go groom them. Sir, I'm wearing a dress. I'm busy. I, I literally, I was like, I'm kind of busy right now. <laughs> like, yeah, like, let me just go change and just drop everything I'm doing for your dog. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you kind of do, even when you're doing really good, sometimes it's easy to feel like you're being used, you know? But then at the same time, I want to end this on a happy note and say, like, you also get, like, like, there are people that appreciate you so fucking much. Like, I have had, like, my clients give me, like, like, I had somebody give me, like, fresh-grown vegetables. I had somebody give me okra. I had a client the other day give me, like, a really sweet card that had been, like, a year that I'd been grooming her dog. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that because I'm the worst. So, anyway, uh, she gave me, like, this thing. I was like, thank you for grooming my dog for the last year and blah, blah, blah. And, like, uh... I had another client, my Red Bulls, apparently, supposedly, some redneck guy at the gas station told me these are going to be discontinued. I'm not sure yet. I'm a little scared because these are my favorite. But um, I had a client because she saw I posted about that. She got me like four fucking Red Bulls. Like there are people that are so good to you and that will make you feel so appreciated. So there's give or take. Okay. But I just, I want to tell you the ugly side too, because I think some people come in so optimistic and I don't want you to come in not optimistic. I just want to clarify, but I, I think I'm not doing anyone a favor if I sit here and pretend like, oh my God, it's so easy. Like you just <laughs> fucking go groom some dogs, bitch. Like it's so fun. Like when it's hard as fuck and it's really stressful and there's like a lot of stuff like with being a business owner that's really fucking hard. So I don't want to sit here and like act like this is easy for me and then somebody else that sees this is like fucking struggling and they're like how is she doing so good and she doesn't ever struggle. I struggle too. We all struggle. I don't know a business owner that doesn't struggle. Not a single one. Okay, it's really, really hard, but it's very fulfilling. Like I said, when your clients give you these little gifts or just tell you, like, how much they mean, like, I'll have people say stuff to me that makes me want to cry sometimes. Like, I just had no idea the impact I've had on them. So, there's give or take. It's 
amazing. Like I would never go back to working for anybody else. I will take all the difficult stuff that I face on a daily basis over ever going back and working for somebody else. Like I absolutely love owning my own business. But like I said, at the same time, I just want to be transparent and let you guys know everybody struggles. So if you're a business owner and you're having a hard time right now, it's okay. Like we seriously, we all do. Like I don't know a single business owner that has never struggled not once. Okay. We have slow seasons like July, August can be a little bit slower, at least for me. And it seems like for a lot of business, even outside of the um, grooming industry, I see a lot of businesses that are slow around this time. Um, so there's that like, and that's really scary when you're slow one month. Like I had a week or I had a day like a couple weeks ago that every dog I had canceled. I've never in the year that I've been open had it, uh, an entire day canceled. I I don't usually even get one cancellation, you know, like it's rare I get a cancellation. So when I had the whole day canceled, I was like, I lost my touch. I suck as a groomer now. Nobody likes me anymore. You know what I mean? Like you, that's like the feelings that you get. And it's not true, but you do feel that way. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about the ugly side too. I don't want every, anybody to think that this is just easy and, you know, just do it. It's so easy. You just invest shitloads of money and then it's just great. And you just have a happy time and you're just so happy from then on out. Like, no, you're going to have days that you fucking are so tired. You wake up and like realize like what kind of day you have ahead of you and you just want to cry. <laughs> like, why? So being a business owner is hard, but you can do it. Like, I, I really think that anybody that puts their mind to it and is ready for that can do it but it is hard and I don't ever want to make you guys think that it's not that it's just super easy and fun and you're just gonna have a great time and never be stressed again in your life like actually be ready to be probably stressed now more than ever because owning your own business is really stressful <laughs> I'm just being honest um but yeah that's the reality now you know okay that's what I'm here for, is to tell you guys the real deal, what things are really like, and not just like sugarcoat it and be like, happy, everybody loves each other, we're just the happiest, like, no, it's so not that way, it's so not that way, um, so if you're having a hard time, it's okay, like we all do, keep moving forward, that's all you can do, uh, and if you're ready, like you're wanting to start your own business, just be ready to work, work your fucking ass off, girl. If you're a hard worker, you're not going to have any trouble, okay? Well, you, that's a lie. You will have trouble, but it's going to be a little bit easier if you're ready to work, okay? So anyway, thank you guys, as always, listening for listening to my blab, and I hope that maybe you picked up a little inspiration, maybe some good information. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it, uh, because I love blabbing at you guys, and I've missed you guys, and I'm so sorry I've been gone away. Like, really, it's just because I've been fucking busy with the van, but I miss you guys, and I really wanted to get back on and start making more videos. So, Wednesday, I'm working on a Hanvey video. Um, I did get the approval from Hanvey to do the little filming. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys their new factory, show you guys what they're doing with my van, those kind of things. Um, so yeah, I love you guys. Thank you as always for watching me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.